let g be a group of prime order p, so that means it has p elements. We want to prove that g is cyclic and has p minus 1 generators, so proof. So suppose g is a group of order p, which is prime, so I won't write that. And since the order of g is a prime number and it's bigger than 1, g has a non-identity element. So take any x and g where x is not the identity. Then by Lagrange the order of x which is equal to the order of the cyclic subgroup generated by x divides the order of g. But the order of g is a prime number. So since p is prime, that leaves us with two choices. The order of x is equal to 1, or the order of x is equal to p. But x is not the identity. So since x is not the identity, the order of x cannot be equal to 1. Hence, the order of x is equal to p. So what does that mean? This means the group generated by x, it's a subgroup of g, and it has the same number of elements as g. So it must be the entire group. So g is cyclic with generator x. So again, when you get to this step right here, the order of x equal to p, you know that this group has p elements. It's a subgroup of g which also has p elements. Therefore, it must be the entire group. So we've proven that G is cyclic. Let's take care of this now. So we know that G has P elements, and we know that it has P minus 1 non-identity elements. We took an arbitrary, we took any X and G that wasn't the identity, and we showed it was a generator. So this holds for any x and g that is not the identity. Since there are p minus 1 choices for x, there are p minus 1 generators. So it's kind of just a consequence of our proof. Really, really nice argument. I hope this helps.